Life, as with science, is a process of trial and error. This video is no different. Welcome to Who Chose. Here on Who Chose, we like to admit mistakes when we make them. So, uh, the sizes I used for the siphon bell and the stand pipe uh, were adjusted incorrectly for the application I was doing. Um, so, I've had to tinker with the um, measurements slightly uh, to con allow the siphon to continue drawing until the bed is completely emptied. Um, so I'll run through with you what I did to fix it um, and we'll look at the siphon in action. Here it goes. Come on. <laughs> So this was my initial excitement at the first fill of the grow bed and what I thought was the siphon, um, but it only siphoned half the grow bed out before the siphon unestablished itself. The problem I had was that the bed was, wasn't draining fast <laughs> enough to keep up with the uh, amount of water siphoning out and the air was coming in from the bottom of the siphon. Now that catch turned off. That's off completely. The flow rate required by the larger <laughs> diameter pipes was in right. excess of what the bed could provide. One of the reasons I'm doing this is so that I can measure how much water the grow bed actually takes, because it's, it's 300 liters but most of it's taken up with play balls, so I need to know. Um, and here we can enjoy my shock as the, the siphon disengages. Um, so after some not so fun adjustments where I had to uh, empty this side of the grow bed, uh, the siphon was initiating, as with my excitement earlier, but um, it wasn't sustaining itself. So uh, the reason was because the amount of water coming out of the pipe wasn't enough to stop water uh, air coming back up into the pipe, and the siphon was breaking from the back of the pipe. Um, so the it was a water flow issue. At first, I thought it was a shroud, so I actually put more holes in the shroud, which I don't think I needed. But um, then I just took the end off. This was meant to make it work more efficiently um, because it gives more water, uh, gives more um, area for the water to flow over. But I think that was actually impeding the whole design. So um, remove the top, replace the siphon. Um, this is the test run, so, um, the water is getting almost to the level of the pipe, um, so fingers crossed, <laughs> I don't want to redesign the whole, whole side, <laughs> um, anyway, here it goes. <laughs> Mm. Cold poop. It seems like the uh, stand pipe is too wide for my pump's capacity. So rather than creating a siphon, it just cascades over the sides um, and the water never gets a chance to build up to the point where a siphon's created. Um, so what I've done is I've reduced the size of my bell and I've also uh, reduced the size of my um, standpipe. So 
so that it's a 15 millimeter um, fitting because the pump that I'm using is a 12 millimeter fitting um, but the speed at which the pump's running should be able to account for the extra few mil so I'll show you what that looks like as you can see here the water is falling over the top of uh, the standpipe but it isn't being replenished fast enough for the water level to rise and then completely close that gap and create a siphon. Uh, so either I would need a larger pump, which would be possible and would allow for a um, faster drain or a smaller pipe um, where the water will eventually catch up and cause a close in that air hole so uh, I'll show you what this one looks like when it's put in the hole in the center where the air can, is allowed to come up is closed and once the bell is on top that causes the siphon effect so I'll put this bell on top And we'll start to see the water level dropping. The siphon has started once the water becomes almost vertical flow um, and doesn't present these wobbles. And that is a siphon. So the final measurements for the bell siphon are 50 millimeter pipe with an end cap for the bell and a 15 millimeter stand pipe with a 25 millimeter opening at the end. So to finish up, I've transplanted in some lettuce um, to see how they like the system. And just in the meantime, I've added some hydroponic nutrient to start the system off. I'm hoping that doesn't affect the fish too much. I'll obviously empty the hydroponic nutrient out before I add fish. I'll let you know. Next time, hopefully, I'll be stocking it with silver perch or another kind of fish that I decide on. Anyway, let's watch the siphon again in action. Ah, there you get the idea. So after all that, I finally managed to get the siphon going. So thanks for joining me here on this episode of Huchos. I uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. I know I didn't. Or maybe I did. I think I did. Maybe. Anyway, time to put a lid on it. See you next time.